What's the deal? This is your boy, Mr. Good Buzz, man. Make sure y'all check out the Mars Hydro FC8000 and the Evo series, period, man. The new Evo series boasts the LM301H Evo chips by Samsung, which boosts the micromoles per joule per dial by 3.14 micromoles per joule. This boy is a beast. You can also add the UR45, which adds and boosts the spectrum of UV and infrared, man. This thing is truly a beast. You can use the IR on anything any of the FC series, man. Make sure you use my discount code, GoodBuzz. Go over to Mars Hydro website and check them out, man. And don't miss out on the crazy FC Evo and the LM301 dials, man. Them boys go crazy. 301H, boy. <laughs> hey. This channel is mostly about weed, so if you're not 18, then you probably shouldn't be here. If you are, cool. Before we get started, if you could like this video and subscribe, that's the biggest thing you could do to help this channel, and I greatly appreciate it. Let's get started. Oh yeah, we back with a series y'all ain't seen for a minute, baby. Man, and we up underneath that Mars Hydro FC Evo 8000. Yes, nigga, we is on 9,000. No, the power level is on 9,000. Let's get it, baby. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Mr. Good Buzz. We back again with the Flower Booth Season 2. That's right, man. Y'all ain't seen no flower, but what we doing this is we go straight to flower. That's right. We jump straight into the series, going straight into flower, man. So we got a lot to talk about. This is a pretty cool series with some super fire strains, man. Uh, in this video, we, this is going to be simply the big flip. Yes, we're going to be preparing for that flower. And let's prepare for the next couple of weeks, man. Appreciate y'all for joining me once again. Make sure you holler at me on TikTok. Holler at that Discord as well. And make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, man. And so let's take it back into time. So this is so we got two strains we running. One of them is the Red Hot Bag. So this is the Red Hot Bag Origins. Uh, so before we moved out of our old crib, uh, we was trying to drop a bunch of seeds. We had to rid the violet, um, the violet, whatever it's called, violet lakes. It didn't run out, work out. So I ended up ordering this, the red hot bag, which is bad cross the red hot cookies. It was a new strain that he came out with, man. And the red hot cookies looked just so fire. Uh, so I decided to go ahead and pick up the red hot bag. Uh, just because I wanted to go ahead and run something brand new since I was so depressed that I ran two packs of violet lakes and neither of them sprouted. Uh, and I had no luck with neither one of them. Um, my problem was, I believe it was because of the cocoa. Now, I was germinating in cocoa. I tried a bunch of different stuff. I tried paper towel method. I tried um, um, the soak method when you're soaking in, uh, in a cup of water first. Uh, tap roots, all that. I tried so many things to try and get the violet legs and the red hot bag to do, to do me justice in the cocoa. Man, when I started using cocoa, dog, I went through hell when it came to the seedlings and the clones, man. I swear to God. They, and seven days later, um, it, it, it still, like, they were so sickly. Like, they did not do well at all. Um, which is why this almost didn't turn out to be a series. Um, which is, this was supposed to be a Patreon series, which ended up not being one at all. And it ended up being the Flower Boo series, because I ended up still having the plants. And they was looking good as fuck. So I'm like, fuck, I'm going to go ahead and flower um, But as you can see, uh, we was having serious issues running with this cocoa though i swear to god man i do not recommend using cocoa unless you know cocoa better you know what i'm saying unless you're professional with the cocoa i do not recommend using cocoa for seedlings or clones um because that that cow mag deficiency that they have is just it's just way too much for the clones and the seedlings and i and they weren't even germinating like i don't even understand and it's crazy because as soon as i went back to germinating in, in soil, I got 100% healthy plants, 100% germination rate. And as you can see, look how deficient they got. Like, like they were, they were going through hell. And I almost, I don't know if it was the Violet Lakes. I don't know what it was about these strains, but they did not do well. Like, the Violet Lakes was not doing good. The Red Hot Bag did not do good at all. Like, like I went through two packs of Violet Lakes, and I, I lost all of them. Like, they all died. And it was all in cocoa. And I believe, I believe it was my fault. I'm not gonna say it was Robin Hood's fault. I believe it was my fault, but I, I had to leave that shit alone. So um, when we ended up moving, I had the I still had the three plants alive in my mother's house, as you can see. Um, they were yellow as hell, deficient as fuck, still in the cocoa, still in them tiny ass, smaller than solo cups. 
Um, and they just they just was not doing good. Um, when I finally got them back to the crib, um, they they seemed like and I transplanted them. I, I transplanted them just because I wanted to try and get clones off of them, and I still wanted to go ahead and flower them out because I still had I still wanted to see who's one of the best phenols. So I was just gonna start over. Um, but y'all gonna see in this series, man, this shit turned out crazy good, crazy good. Like I was really amazed. So this in this shot right here, they were still at Miles' house. Um, being neglected out the ass, so I did end up getting them back to the house, and one of them started flowering on his own from the stress. Um, Phenol number three just started flowering, and we're gonna come back to that. So the truffle lava runs origin. So the truffle lava runs. Oh my god, dog. Bay Area cannabis. First of all, if y'all not up on Bay Area, they got the crack, bro. I'm telling you, Robin Hood and Bay Area are the two best breeders to me right now. Uh, and I don't, I, I don't know. I haven't grown from too many. They're my two favorite breeders, but I never never go wrong with bay area so i ended up getting some seeds actually they didn't even have these seeds i actually found a, a reseller who had these on has to sell had some of these and because you are not going to be able to find this truffle lava runs and after you see it you're going to want to cut you're going to want to cut i'm telling you you can't get no seeds of it uh, not from the uh breeder at least so eight days later and the truffle lava runs in the top left hand corner did not sprout this is after eight days and I was trying, this is, I tried to sprout them in the root right cues. I had no luck with root right cues. Man, I, I had so much problem when I tried to turn away from just dropping the seeds directly into the soil, man. So I did end up planting another seed in the same Trevor Lava Runs cube. And what do you know, two days later, they both popped out. It was like the one went down in there, was like, what you doing, bro? Come on up, dog. Come on, man. We got light to get. And they both came up and popped out at the exact same time. So I ended up separating them, which I, I went online, I went on the gram and asked everybody what they felt like I should do. Everybody said, a lot of people said, go ahead and try and separate them. And that's what I ended up doing. Some people said, just let them grow out and kill one of them. But I had to pick the best pheno, you know what I'm saying? I'd be big on picking that best pheno. And I am so glad that I did this, y'all. I am so glad. Uh, so this was the outdoor booth. So we did end up getting these transplanted into some solo cups. And I let them get bigger until I went and transplanted them outdoors. And we went through a whole run outdoors. And that run ended up, we ended up having to leave the house. So I actually had to cut these plants down early, um, which was cool. One of them, um, this was phenol number two right here. Um, and I'm not even going to tell you guys which one turned out to be the better phenol. Um, but I had, I did end up having that. What I did, I got confused. And I and I took clones, I took cuts, and then I mixed them up. So I didn't know which one was phenol number one and which one was phenol number two. And one of the phenols made a serious difference. And this was the one right here. This is the one uh, that had a way different turf profile. And I couldn't tell the difference once they were clones. And I got them confused. Now, as you can see, this one was up right underneath a tree. And it just had serious powdery mildew problems. Like, it was just... It was just getting destroyed by powdery mildew. So I ended up cutting both of these down because they. Had, I had to leave the crib um, and I ended up just coming back at nighttime one day and I just chopped them all down with, with my um, saws off. And I can't find that damn saws off, dog. And I was just looking for this thing the other day. It's crazy. I was using it in this video to cut the plants down. Um, but we did end up harvesting at night. I had to sneak back over to the crib, harvest my plants at nighttime. Um, and then we got them hung up and dried. Um, and the clones grew up and then I wanted to go ahead and flower them again. So here's today. Uh, so what we have here is three phenols from the red hot bag. Now this is phenol number three. As you can see, it started flowering crazy. The turps smell so good. Like the turps was crazy. The way this thing smelled was amazing. It smelled like straight candy, um, straight bubble gum, like, like a juicy fruit. Like, like it smelled just like the blueberry cookie, but it was way better than the blueberry cookie when it come down to bud structure and stuff. Um, but very similar turps. Um, we got the, so I did end up going in. I'm like, oh, let's go ahead. We got the two truffle lava runs. We got phenol number one and phenol number two. This is phenol number two in the front. And we got phenol number one in the back. Then we got the three red hot bag. Um, red hot bag number one in the back. Red hot bag number two right here. And then red hot bag number three is the one that's flowering in the front. So I did go ahead and just like, man, I'm just going to go ahead and, since it seemed like it was revegging, it seemed like it was revegging. So I decided to go ahead and put it in here and go ahead and let it flower out with the rest. But as you can see, this is the same red hot bag plants that you saw earlier in this video. Um, once I got over, once I got to the crib, transplanted them, um, got to feeding them and caring for them, they started blowing up, man, looking real good. So I'm like, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and flower them out. I did scrap the whole rest of the series because I was like, they looked horrible. But let's go ahead and just do a flower booth. So I decided to document it for y'all and let's go ahead and get them fed. 
and get them flipped to flour. So what we're going to do is we're going to give them some worm castings straight from Michigan worm castings. You feel me? Uh, I learned that the worm castings with the cocoa works very, very well. And yes, they are in cocoa. I did transplant them. They are in five gallon um, fabric pots with cocoa. We gave them two tablespoons per gallon uh, feed. Um, and that's the that's the four the four six two or whatever it is and the bone meal I gave about 75 uh, 25 percent um, bone meal and then we went ahead and and got that mixed down into that soil into that cocoa um, and we gonna go ahead and run these plants as is from uh, for the next nine weeks um, now with the cocoa you know when we even though this even though I'm doing an organic dry nutrient run the cocoa does need to be. Uh, pH. So we go ahead and pH. We gonna keep our pH um, in between 6.2 and 6.8, um, like Canuck said. Now with the hydro, I do 5.8 to 6.2. Um, but according to Canuck, he had really great results, and I had really great results this run. Um, I did do 6.2 to 6.8, and oh my god, wait till y'all watch this. This is a really fire run. I'm not gonna hold y'all up, man. The shit went crazy. Um, so I did go ahead and lollipop the girls as well. Uh, we gonna what I wanted to what I wanted to make sure with this run is since I was having problems with the powdery mildew, I made sure that our canopy and our underskirts of these plants were extremely clean. And so I lollipop really high and I just made sure these girls were so so clean uh, so that the airflow was beautiful and I had plenty of air flowing past these leaves. And so we're gonna go ahead and get it popping. So we up underneath the Mars Hydro FC 8000 Evo and it does have the UR45 infrared and the ultraviolet add-on light. Now I do end up switching that out for the ad lights um, with the deep red UV and IR in the series as well. So stay tuned for that. So this is gonna be flower day one. We went ahead and got the scrog net on. Um, the one that was flipped in the flower. I couldn't trim the one. I couldn't clean up the one that was already revenging as much because it's just a fucking mess. But I decided to, hey, let's just see what happens, man. I was a little worried about it getting powdery mildew, but I really just said fucking and just I'm just gonna let this do what it do and let's see what happens, man. Comment down below what y'all think is gonna happen, man. Um, this series turned out to be so fire, y'all, and I learned a lot from this series, and I hope you guys learn a lot as well. Uh, so make sure you guys stay tuned because there's gonna be another fire entry to the Good Buzz Library, man. Uh, and this is also my first grow in a five by five. This is my first run in a five by five. So I pray we get the yield we want. Even though I didn't smoke the quarter of each one of these plants since they've dried, and I didn't even I didn't even uh, weigh them up. So we about four quarters short on our yield. But appreciate y'all for joining me once again. Make sure y'all holler at the munchies. Make sure y'all holler at me on TikTok, man. We going crazy on TikTok, man. And make sure you subscribe to the channel, man. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.